Okay, Tippy's puppies are now 16 days old, and so that marks their next transitional period. So okay. what we do with them changes a little bit. Okay. So before you were doing what? ENS. The early neurological stimulation right. exercises. Okay, and what else? Um, weighing them every day, make okay. sure they don't uh, lose weight. If they stay the same or lose, then um, you want me to mark it so that we pay attention, because okay. that's a sign of maybe something's going Wrong. So Wrong. Or, or they're not getting health. enough. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so with our transitional period now, we're moving toward, um, th this is a time when they start to realize there's something else beside themselves and their mom. So human interaction at this point is incredibly important. Okay. But there's things we can do that can mess this up. So um, why don't you take a puppy. You want me to take? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead and grab a puppy. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now we're gonna start the real mild handling. Oh, goodness. Yep. And I want you to pay attention to that, just like we did on the ENSs. Mm -hmm. When they panic, what are you gonna do? Hold them. Hold them. And apply. don't do anything. And don't do anything. Apply a little bit of pressure because all puppies experience fear. It's how we handle it that will teach them to be more reliable and more sound and more balanced. Okay. So we can't change who they are but we can change how they manage that stress. And if they're panicking and they stress out, go ahead and pull her away from you a little bit and put her back to you. So look at this one here. If they're doing that, and if I put him down right now, like this, in this state of mind, mm -hmm. what am I teaching him? That when he stresses, he doesn't have any security. He's gotta get back to his litter. And so what is he gonna associate me with? Ooh, stress. Stress. So his first interaction with humans, us. And if he experiences that every time I hold him and he has stress and I just put him back when he's in this state of mind, he will never trust humans the way that we want our puppies to trust humans. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So anytime they panic, you do not put them down. Okay. So panic when they start wiggling and screaming and kind of making those grunting yeah. noises. Yeah. When he did just this experience of lack of trust, like this, right there. And now he's calm, and you can feel it. Do you feel her calm? Yes. Now? I guess you can now pick up another one. Okay. And I'm not going to put him down right now because he's still going through his thing. Okay. Now, the important thing to remember when we're looking at these puppies, because we're placing one of these puppies as potentially a facility dog or therapy dog okay. for healing hearts. Okay. There we go right there. A little bit of pressure. Okay. All right. It's okay. We want him to associate humans as caring and kind, reliable and trustworthy. Okay. That's what we're doing right now. So if our interaction and our handling with them is quick and stressful, then that's the foundation we're laying. And that's so exactly I, opposite of what we want to do. Okay, so um, I need to remain calm. Yes. My persona, just, I need yes. to be calm, yep. slow. Um, what does the pressure do? I mean, why does that equate... Okay. Uh, security to them being in the womb okay. remember their babies or they are coming out of their neonatal but any kind of pressure even with our human babies um, makes them feel safe okay so this pressure and think about how they sleep yeah in always a pile. touching in a pile right or yeah. tucked against their mom so this is safety okay so we're just translating safety security calmness to them okay. we're practicing being in a, a healthy state of mind and so when they panic we bring them back to a healthy state of mind we're teaching them um, to rebound. Okay. So startle response. They startle when we touch them. They're like, oh my gosh. And we want them to respond quickly and retain, uh, return back to a normal state. Oh, wow. So, yep. okay. so we're practicing the startle response, which is crucial for our service dogs because out in public, they're going to startle and see new things all the time, right? They're going to startle, but we want them to respond quickly. Be like, oh, what was that? Oh, no, I'm okay. Keep moving. Keep working. So keeping them in that state of mind as much as possible and helping them practice it. So it's just like raising kids. When you know they make a mistake, you help guide them to practice so that they become, you know, more proficient at whatever you're trying to right. teach them or train them to do. Okay. Okay. So we'll put this one down. Pick up another one. So, <laughs> listen a bit. They are sheer panic. Now I put her down. The other thing, if I feel like, oh my gosh, poor baby, oh poor baby. If I feel that, I'm actually validating her feelings of fear right now. So I don't feel sorry for her. 
I'm not coddling her in a sense that I'm applying human emotions to her, because if we continue to treat them like humans and, uh, and think that they have human emotions, we're going to continue to ruin our dogs. But it's natural for them to <laughs> just go, oh my honey, and I know I've done that before. Thing. I know. So you want to exude calm, um, self-secure, what's my word? Um, being not assertive, but confident, confidence. Confidence, yeah. okay. You want to exude, you can trust me. I, you know, I will take care of you. You are fine. Okay. That's what you want to be thinking. You're fine. So you don't want to say, oh, it's okay. Is no. that, yeah. Well, I mean, you can say it, but you really want, it doesn't really matter what you say. Yeah. You could say anything. It matters how you feel. Okay. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, this poor puppy, oh yeah. my gosh, then, then they're thinking, why is this human upset? Why is this human having? They can sense that. Yes, yeah, and and that's what's and that's what makes forty kennels. I feel like our dogs, truly incredible. That we hear so many stories about the things that they have done and the lives they have changed, is that innate ability to truly read humans, and it starts now. Wow. It starts in this handling now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, Carol. <laughs> I was just weighing puppies here. I know, you know. I know. There's so much more to it, and this is what truly makes the difference and, and sets us apart in, in getting these puppies um, the homes that they need and making that match because that's what's so important to me. You know, because you bought a puppy for me. Yes. That's how we met. Yes. Right? So yeah. it's that whole process. And then through these weeks of making these little mental notes, and we get to the end and the finish line, and then evaluating them and then knowing our clients we can help make that connection so that it's meaningful and long-term. So what are you looking for, um, so for the, ultimately? So it depends. There's three categories in my mind. When I start working with puppies in a, and, and a litter is born, three main categories. There's service dog okay. category. Okay. That's really one type of puppy okay. overall okay. With, with minor differences depending exactly what kind of service they need. Mm -hmm. You know, diabetic alert or mobility. You know, mobility if it's a larger person, we need a larger dog. Right. Then we have facility and therapy dog. To me, that's very a very different type of puppy than a service dog. There's different things we're looking for. Compliance and reliance to touch. Truly wanting human touch and interaction. Not all dogs do. Not all dogs want to be groped by just anybody. Right. It's upsetting to them. Yeah. So that's definitely not a therapy dog. We wouldn't be doing the client or the dog any justice by placing a puppy that doesn't truly enjoy all of that handling mm -hmm. in that kind of environment. So we're looking for confidence, okay. um, uh, the ability to handle the handling, and it doesn't upset them. Mm -hmm. um, a intrinsic motivation to please. We want them to truly want to please and be with people and not mm -hmm. be self-serving and mm -hmm. independent. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the key points we look for. And then of course our third category is family companions. Mm -hmm. And family companions can be any type of puppy, but then it's just making sure the client gets the right type of puppy. Right. If that makes sense. So, so when we, I do the evaluations at the end, I, I note on them, Excel at service dog work. Excel at therapy facility dog work. And then, you know, if, if, it, if I don't say you're one of those things, then I, it's not the best choice to put a puppy in one of those environments. Mm -hmm.